Welcome back to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're diving into a thought-provoking topic that highlights a disturbing reality in many developing countries. We'll be exploring the notion that being President Biden's inept son, Hunter Biden, who got a sweetheart deal from the DOJ. What a joke. Tucker responded on his latest episode of Tucker on Twitter. Hunter Biden is gets more safety and security than Biden's political opponent. It's a topic that demands attention and reflection. So, let's hear what Tucker Carlson has to say. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. This spring, word began to circulate in Washington that the House Oversight Committee, under its new chairman, Congressman Jamie Comer, had discovered criminal behavior after reviewing thousands of pages of the Biden family's bank records. Now, publicly, to the extent they responded at all, the White House dismissed the investigation as, of course, politically motivated. In any case, irrelevant. Hunter Biden was an adult, so his business dealings had nothing at all to do with his father, in this case, the President of the United States. But in private, everybody understood it wasn't quite that simple. There has long been overwhelming evidence that Joe and Hunter Biden's financial lives are not separate at all, but deeply intertwined. On Hunter Biden's laptop, there's a suggestion that the two of them, even at one point, shared a bank account. And of course, Hunter Biden wrote himself that he kicked back cash from his foreign business deals to his father. He wrote that bitterly. So the Oversight Committee's investigation was potentially a disaster for the White House, a scandal, possibly even the prelude to criminal charges. So in order to get ahead of all of that, Joe Biden's handlers did the one thing they could do. They set up an MSNBC interview to preemptively whitewash whatever Jamie Comer might find. Here's the result of that. This aired on May 5th. Sir, there is something personal that's affecting you. Your son, while there's no ties to you, could be charged by your Department of Justice. How will that impact your presidency? First of all, my son's done nothing wrong. I trust him. I have faith in him. And it impacts my presidency by making me feel proud of him. Okay, time for the master class for free. You can audit it. Here it goes. Sir, showing appropriate respect, says the shill. There is something personal that's affecting you. Note the wording. Personal, not of public concern. Nothing law enforcement might be interested in. But personal, a sad family tragedy. That's the framing. And then this, a sentence choreographed to the letter. Your son, while there's no ties to you, could be charged by your Department of Justice. Got that? Well, there's no tie to you. So the answer is, in fact, in the question. Whatever Hunter Biden goes down for, and we know he is going to be charged because MSNBC said so, but when that happens, that's Hunter's problem. It's got nothing to do with Joe Biden. Rest easy, America. Five days later, the Oversight Committee released its findings, and they were, in fact, devastating. Quote, bank records show the Biden family their business associates, and their companies, their many companies, received over $10 million from foreign nationals and their related companies, the committee wrote. Investigators had, quote, identified payments to Biden family members from foreign companies while Joe Biden served as vice president and after he left public office. So actually, there was something there. It was a scandal. Racketeering, money laundering, wire fraud. Those are some of the crimes the Bidens seem to have committed, in addition, of course, to selling out the United States for cash. So what would happen to them? Well, Donald Trump had an idea, quote, they'll hit Hunter with something small to make their strike on me look fair. Trump wrote that about two weeks ago, and it turned out those were prescient words. This morning, Hunter Biden pleaded guilty to pretty much nothing. Biden pled to two misdemeanor tax evasion charges, then entered a diversion on a federal gun charge. That's it. As far as Merrick Garland's Justice Department is concerned, Hunter Biden is done. There was no pre-dawn raid carried live simultaneously on CNN. There was no perp walk, no handcuffs, no press conference. Above all, there was no felony. Hunter Biden, who broke federal gun laws, can still carry a gun. It's like it all never happened. In fact, the Justice Department just baptized Hunter Biden. A lifetime of sins washed away in an instant. It was a secular miracle. Most miraculous of all, Hunter Biden somehow escaped a FARA charge. FARA is the Foreign Agent Registration Act, and it is exactly what its name suggests. Under federal law, if you are acting as an agent of a foreign nation in Washington, you are required to register with our government to let everybody know. 
Well, for decades, pretty much nobody in Washington did register under FARA, and precisely no one was ever prosecuted for it. No one. But starting several years ago, the Justice Department began sending people to prison on FARA violations. The official explanation was, we're cracking down on foreign influence in Washington. And of course, privately, everyone in Washington laughed. They knew that was absurd. In fact, it's the opposite of the truth. Foreign powers have never had more power in Washington. Their agents are everywhere, in every federal agency and throughout business, down to and including in executive positions at various social media companies. The Biden administration knows all of this, and it's not a problem. In fact, it's their policy. From the administration's perspective, the concerns and the demands of, say, the Chinese government, or particularly the Ukrainian government, are far more important than the needs of American voters. We're cracking down on foreign influence, please. The point, the only point of enforcing FARA after decades of ignoring it, is to harass and imprison high profile political opponents. Trump donor Elliot Broidy pled to a FARA violation a few years ago. So did Trump campaign manager, famously Paul Manafort. He went to prison. Last year, the DOJ went after Trump confidant Steve Wynn under FARA. But in the end, the Biden administration overreached so comically that the whole thing was thrown out by a judge. But they tried. So as long as they're trying, if it was a fair system, Hunter Biden would be first on the list of those next to be charged with a FARA violation. In fact, many of them. Hunter Biden was a foreign agent. He never registered as one. But for years, that's exactly what he was. He sold access to his father and other lawmakers to the Chinese and the Ukrainians and countries throughout the world. There's no debate about that. The FBI has known about it for years. For years, they've had possession of Hunter Biden's laptop. But they didn't charge him for it today. They never will. Why? Well, you know the answer. Hunter Biden has good genes. A more interesting question, though, which is another question the feds will never consider, is what does Hunter Biden do for a living now? This is a man with no obvious job and, of course, zero skills. He spent midlife smoking crack. Yet somehow he's managed to live pretty well despite rising inflation. He's been living in big houses in the costliest residential neighborhoods in the world. He's been paying his stripper baby mama 20 grand a month in child support. And he has retained a team of the most expensive lawyers in the country who spend quite a bit of time sending threatening letters to anyone who asks questions about how they're being paid. We can confirm that firsthand. So again, what does Hunter Biden do for work? That's a fair question. And tonight we have the answer. For years, Hunter Biden was an influence peddler. Now Hunter Biden is a self-actualizer. He self-actualizes for a living. He gets in touch with himself, his feelings, and he follows his muse. Here he is explaining his new vocation in a 2019 ABC News interview. Mm -hmm. This is new. Yeah. Your studio. Yeah. But now he's opening the doors to a place never captured by a paparazzi's lens, his refuge, an art studio where he finds solace in painting. What's the goal eventually? Um, no, no goal. That's the no. perfect part about it. It's just, it literally keeps me sane. His refuge, far from the paparazzi's lens. In other words, we're not the paparazzi, we're ABC News. What's the goal of this? Your refuge. There's no goal, he says, grinning with those fake teeth. It just keeps me sane. But actually, there was a goal. And if you didn't know what a virtuous person Hunter Biden was, you might think it looked a lot like money laundering. Two years after that interview, Hunter Biden was selling prints of his art. And to be clear, just the prints, not the, quote, art itself, but effectively photocopies of it for $75,000 a pop. Apparently, Hunter Biden moved five of these repros in just days. That's $375,000 in less than a week for signing copies of your fake art. As for the paintings themselves, childish self-indulgent blots, those sold for half a million dollars a piece. So the question is who bought them and why? It'd be interesting to know. There's a story there for sure, but of course we have no right to know. There's no public policy implication. It's not like Hunter Biden's finances have anything to do with his father's finances. Meanwhile, once his father did become president, corporate publisher Simon & Schuster lined up as well to pay Hunter Biden's bills. According to news reports, Simon & Schuster gave Hunter Biden millions of dollars for his highly selective account of his wholly unaccomplished life. 
And then the publisher lined up brainless celebrity endorsers like Dave Eggers and Stephen King to promote it. King, who apparently will say anything if it helps the party, called Hunter Biden's silly manuscript a, quote, harrowing and compulsively readable memoir. And then Stephen King described Hunter Biden himself as beautiful. Needless to say, the book sold miserably, but Hunter Biden got to keep the millions, and that was the point. And so on. This kind of thing apparently happened a lot. Again, there seems to be a story here, and we think it's probably worth learning a lot more about it and bringing it to you. In the coming weeks, we will. In the meantime, though, the question is, what can we learn from Hunter Biden's plea deal today? First off, the obvious. For the children of the people in charge, there are no penalties. There are only upsides. They're princelings. They can do what they want. You are not. Therefore, you can't. So don't get any ideas about cheating on your taxes or violating federal gun laws unless you want to celebrate next year's Father's Day through the glass in the visitor's room. The rules definitely apply to you, including rules you don't yet know exist. But there is also a deeper lesson here, a more disturbing one. What we're watching through Hunter Biden's life and through the Biden administration now entering its third year is the total inversion of virtue. What was once considered admirable is now derided as stupid, if not racist. That would include achievement, intelligence, honesty, self-control, humility. Those are features of the old America. Those were yesterday's virtues. They are gone. In their place, all that we once considered contemptible and repulsive, we're told to worship that now. Here's a small example, but we think a revealing one. In addition to his many other sins, Joe Biden has hired what has to be the single dumbest, nastiest, most dishonest, most ridiculous person he could possibly find for the very public position of White House press secretary. There's a point to it, of course. It was a humiliation exercise. It was designed to degrade the country and dispirit the rest of us. That's the White House press secretary? Shut up! But here's the thing. The White House press secretary herself has no idea why she's in the job. She thinks she's amazing. Here she is in a clip we just saw. A year in this role, there's been a couple of things that I that has made me incredibly proud. Many things, many things that made me incredibly proud to be at that podium uh, during this historic moment. Again, this is a historic administration. I'm a historic figure and I certainly walk in history every day. I'm a historic figure. <laughs> Imagine saying that. I'm a historic figure, but she does. And she says it in a burst of sincere self-congratulation marked by her signature bad grammar. Illiterate, but proud. Of course she's proud. Karine Jean-Pierre is now a historic figure, just like Hunter Biden is now an important artist. It makes you feel stupid for going to work. Younger people say the news is full of lies. Son Kennedy's motorcade. 239 people fell to death of Jeffrey Epstein. That wraps up our discussion for today. I hope this video shed some light on an issue that deserves our attention. If you found this content informative and thought provoking, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful discussions like this. As always, we encourage you to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments section below. Have you observed similar patterns in your own country? Let's continue this conversation and work towards a more equitable political landscape. Thank you for joining us today. Until next time, stay informed, stay curious, and keep questioning the world around you. Take care.